Uh, it's March 1st, 2020, so uh, welcome to what we call here in Wisconsin pre-spring. Uh, this is when spring uh, tends to tease us a bit. Um, you think it's coming, and then Mother Nature has a nasty surprise in store. So don't get ahead of yourself if you're uh, you know, living in the uh, upper Midwest, because, you know, Mother Nature... Uh, is is the ultimate bitch. Um, wanted to, uh, well, actually first. Um, so I, I got a little bit of time uh, off for a couple of days. Uh, first week at the new job doing what I'm doing. Uh, Eye-opening for sure. Um, very cool. Very, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it a lot. Uh, except for, uh, you know, when it's 10 below and I'm up on a roof installing uh, your dish so you can have TV, uh, that can be a little bit miserable, but I'm only up there for 20 minutes or so, and uh, then I can go inside the worm and, and uh, warm up a little bit, but uh, that's kind of the only downside so far. Um, so working a lot of hours, so I wanted to take this time to um, sort of discuss my last video that I posted um, this one right here about, uh, that are alive, um, uh, talking about, you know, where I went through all my hives, uh, at the end of February just to see, um, if they needed some extra sugar to get them through this March when they can get out, fly a little bit, but then get stuck in their hive for another couple of weeks when it gets cold, which is exactly what happened because after I left, uh, a week ago, um, when I put all those sugar bricks on there, it stayed cold uh, all the way up until, well, today it's supposed to be up in the upper 40s, so the bees should be out flying again. Uh, so they're not able to get out, and even if they can get out, they're active, they're going to need food uh, because there's just nothing out here. But uh, what I wanted to discuss was I, I received a lot of comments um, with regards to, uh, it was uh, uh, sympathy comments uh, to my uh, losses that I that I uh, I took this winter, and maybe I I, I didn't uh, explain myself well enough, or maybe you didn't uh, um, you haven't watched me and and know what I'm doing or what I'm after. Um, I I'm extremely pleased with my success. Uh, this year. Um, I started with 20 and I have 13. Uh, this is a banner year for me. And the reason I think that this is a, a, you know, a, a good year, I mean, in previous year, my first year I lost uh, all my hives. I think my second year I might have lost all my hives. Uh, last year I had one, survived. Um, actually, my second year I think I had half survive but I only had four hives so it didn't really matter um but this year I got 13 that survived um I'm in the process right now of creating survivor stock you know I'm using you know all these uh bees that are are coming up queens that are coming up from the south uh this year I am bringing in some uh Carniolans, like New River honeybees, uh, artificially inseminated. We bought a breeder queen from the club, uh, and I had it open mated in my yard, and those bees are doing fantastic. Conversely, I bought four Michael Palmer queens last year. Uh, two didn't even make fall, and two didn't survive the winter, so there was zero success there. Uh, my, my open mated mating queens are all doing fantastic. So... Winter is the ultimate selector for you. And I'm using winter as the ultimate selector. Uh, in the fall, you know, I had some hives that didn't, um, that weren't taking down syrup uh, near as fast as other colonies that I had. No idea why. Um, they could have been on a different seasonal structure uh, that they're at the, in their genetics, that's what they're used to. And they didn't feel the need to. They didn't know winter was coming that fast. Those are the colonies I want to call. Mother Nature did it for me. 
Uh, so I appreciate the sympathies, but honestly, this is what this is what we're doing. I I never expected a hundred percent, and nor do I want a hundred percent right now. Simply because I want to weed out uh, those colonies that that are not adaptable to my environment here, for my region, uh, for my winters, for my uh, honey flows, pollen flows. Um, and I want to keep the ones that are adaptable to it. Um, it's, it's a lot like breeding for, let's say, varroa mites. And you want to, you want to create a, a, a breed that is just varroa resistance. Well, if you have, uh, four hives and you lost, and you, and you know, you're used to losing like 95% of your hive, well, you lost them all. If you start with 100 and lose 95%, well, you still have five hives to start from. Uh, the more that hives that you have, uh, the more survivors that you can, you can get, and then you use those five to create your strain of bees, maybe that can be a little bit more varroa resistance. It's the same as being a winter survivability, um, winter survivor stock here in North Woods. Now I still have to deal with obviously when I'm open mating, you know, if there's colonies down the road, I'm going to still get drones in there and I'm still going to have to, you know, weed those and those will be weeded out, uh, in, um, in successive winters. Uh, I am striving for 85% in my, um, in my apiaries. Uh, survivability after but this breeding program that I'm doing or this uh, program that I'm doing to create my own stock of bees not my own breed of bees my own stock of bees um, is going to take time it, it might take four or five years before I'm really comfortable and I'm starting to see those kind of numbers it will get there I had people um, you know that ripped me because I didn't insulate my hives and and I don't know what video they were watching um, that I had, uh, you know, this will learn, teach you a lesson because you had open, um, you know, open entrances and you should only have a little small open entrance and, and you didn't wrap your hives and you had moisture problems. And I'm like, I don't know what video you're watching. Every one of my hives is bone dry. Uh, I don't have a moisture problem. Uh, moist, you know, air flows in the bottom of my hives and out through the, the top entrance. I lift my colonies up. I had no frost, no nothing, even on all my alive hives. So I don't know what you were watching, uh, but um, that wasn't an issue. Um, another person, um, actually, I, I, I get along well with this guy. Uh, he he kind of got on me because I put sugar on my colonies. Um, you know, I put sugar on my colonies because I'm not going to get out there in midwinter you know, um, to the farm. So I can't get out there like right now and go feed my bees uh, with three feet of snow on there. I can't haul uh, hundreds of pounds of sugar out there to put on my colonies in late March. So yes, I put them on in, in uh, December because, you know, it, it's a logistics thing. Yes, all the bees will go up straight up to the sugar. That's just what they do. Um, I have a different winter than he does. I mean, um, his bees were being flooded in January. Um, it's cold here in January. There's no flood. It's just snow. Uh, so w while he's used to uh, bees brooding up in April um, and and being very, very populous in April, my bees are just will just start to take down pollen in April. They're not going to get the cleansing flight. So I don't put pollen patties on early. Because if I put pollen patties on too early and they don't have cleansing flights, I'm going to have a dysentery mess in my hives because that stuff goes right through them. Um, and I'm just going to have a, a, a big mess. And that's not really what I want. Um, and once you start feeling, uh, feeding pollen patties, uh, you don't stop. Um, again, out at the farm, I can't get out there to go feed like I like I want to so I have to time things for my region this is for me um, 
You know, like I said, his backyard, there was two months ago, he didn't have a drop of snow on the ground. Um, me, I've got two feet of snow on the ground. You saw my video, you know what it's like. Uh, different regions, people have to have to deal with things just a little bit differently. Uh, I have no qualms about putting Sugar uh, Mountain Camp on my, my colonies uh, in, um, in December. None whatsoever. So... Um, and, uh, you know, the hives that starved, I don't want them anyways. Uh, the hives that didn't, the weak hives that didn't brood up uh, well, I don't want them. Uh, weak colonies, the ultimate selector. So just wanted to put that out there that um, there's a method to a madness. Um, I, I realized this year, wrapping hives, uh, I had... 66% survival rate on my colonies, and I didn't wrap a single hive. Uh, and none of my issues was due to the cold. Uh, one thing I do want to do, though, I do want to tape um, my seams. Well, get some different type of... Uh, I tried duct tape on one of my colonies, and by the time a couple months went by, it kind of fell off, so duct tape doesn't really work very well. But that uh, uh, Reflectix tape that they sell um, it's expensive, but I think that will work, work really well, and it won't peel off my, um, um, paint, and it won't stick to the hive and, and leave the, uh, fibers like duct tape would or anything like that, so I think I'm going to go with that next year and just wrap the, um, the seams. We got down, uh, two weeks, we were down 20 below, uh, you know, up to about zero, 10 degrees during the day. Uh, back down to 10 below uh, for two weeks here in February. And the same number of bees didn't have any problems with it. Matter of fact, one of my smaller hives, I was surprised um, that it has survived so far because I thought for sure that they would be gone. And they're doing actually better than I expected. I'm, I'm actually quite, quite shocked, but that's also one of my, one of my homegrown, homegrown bees. Um, so no sympathies were actually needed. I, I guess I did not convey that message to everyone, um, as to what I'm doing. But, you know, if you're starting to create your own stock, you're going to have losses and you're going to, even if you get what you want, you're going to have, you're going to have losses. Look at, uh, Richard Noel just put out a, a video, uh, about a week ago where he had massive winter losses and he doesn't know what exactly went wrong you know everybody's tend to tell him that the, it's a varroa issue and he treated his hives uh he, he swears up and down he doesn't think that that's it um he's just he's kind of i think he's he's kind of nailing it down to uh sort of the weather and not being able to get out i'm not sure what his issue was but even he he survived he's created his own survivor stock he's done the same program for years he's perfected his program and he still had huge losses this year uh, mother nature is like i said the ultimate selector of bees so you're gonna have losses uh so no sympathies now if i if i didn't treat my hives and i didn't have a little bit of a program going on uh, then it would be you know and i had losses because of varroa like I, I did when I first started uh, beekeeping, then that's on me. Um, and that, that was, that's a learning uh, curve that I had, and, uh, and I sure learned my lesson. But this was a great experiment this year for me, and uh, I think I'm on the right trajectory for my, my own apiary. So I just wanted to put that out there, and, uh, you know, like I said, if you have losses, Think positively about what you can come of it. The survivor stock that you have, that's a good starting point. I have 13 hives now that, uh, that, that I can roll with in spring. Maybe I'll lose a couple more before March is over with. We'll see. Uh, but that's a great starting point. It's way more than I had last year or the year before. And, uh, you know, with 10 hives, I can have 40 hives by... Um, next fall without buying a single um without buying a single package or nuke 
So um, I am very, very pleased with uh, how my bees have performed this winter. Um, so that's it for me. Um, laundry day for me, and then I'm going to be back on the road, back to the motel um, for another week. And uh, I hope by next week, uh, next weekend, I'll be able to um, peek in on the girls. It'll be, looks like we're going to have a kind of a, a warm spell, a warm spell for March here, you know, in the 40s. Uh, so they're going to be out and about more. And then, um, see, it's March 1st right now. I'm thinking about putting pollen patties on mid-March, March 14th. I'll just peek in on them. I'll actually look at the forecast, see what, um, man, you can't, sometimes you just can't trust the forecast because it'll say it's supposed to be nice. And then three days will go by and this is, oh, an Arctic blast is coming through. And then you're like, oh, great. But, um, I'm shooting for March 14th for my pollen patties. You saw my video that I got them all made up already. They're in the freezer. Just have to thaw them out, slap them on. I've already got the feeder shims on all my all my hives. So they'll just go on right over the... If there's sugar in the whale, they'll go right on over the sugar. Uh, I'll put a little bit more sugar on if they need it uh, to get them through March and April. Uh, and then April 7th last year was the first... Uh, maple pollen coming in. I had a, I had pollen coming in just before that, and I think it might have been from a uh, willow. Uh, but I, I, I again, I, I'm not I'm not sure. I was just looking at the color on the on the pollen on the legs, uh, trying to decide. It could there no willow around here, but down by the river, which is a mile away, or well, it's actually as a crow flies, probably a half a mile away. Um, there might be willow along the along the banks that they're at their um finding so not sure about that but so we're getting there uh it's exciting time of the year i know everybody's excited to get back into their bees i know i am and uh looking forward to it so till next time take care happy beekeeping and remember all beekeeping is local